I've been meeting with some people weekly to discuss some philosophical topics, and lately we've been talking about consciousness, and so I've read some things and saw some things. And I recently saw a notable speaker talk about how you could go to work, drive to work in the morning without being conscious. And I think the idea would be you get to work, but you can't remember which route you you took. Maybe you take two or three different routes to work. And this day you can't remember which one you took. You can't remember if you ate breakfast or not. You were kind of in a fog going to work. And his idea was you weren't conscious. Now, no one owns the word consciousness or conscious. So a person can use it however they want. But until you get the definition really nailed down, you can't have good conversations because your definition of what consciousness is might be different than someone else's. So if you're not talking about the same thing, the same idea, then it wouldn't be surprising if you can't agree. So I was trying to think of a way to describe consciousness, and I came up with the idea of mechanism. The idea is pretty simple. Imagine you have a mouse trap, and the mouse comes along and just kind of sniffs the cheese, and nothing happens. Second mouse comes along, bites the cheese, the trap springs, and the mouse gets trapped. Now, when we explain what happened, we do it in terms of mechanism. The cheese is on a rod that touches the catch that holds the uh, spring-loaded mechanism, which when the catch releases, it comes down and catches the mouse. We don't describe it in terms of mind states, in terms of intent, in terms of, well, the trap didn't want to be bothered. The first mouse, well, the mouse was just sniffing, so the trap said, well, I'm not going to bother with this. But when the second one took a bite, the trap said, this mouse is really bothering me. I'm going to strike back. We don't talk like that because we don't attribute thought and consciousness to a mousetrap. Now, the idea is that I believe that scientists, when they describe humans, they describe mechanism. It's much more complicated mechanism than a mousetrap. You've got neurons and dendrites and biochemicals and electromagnetic signals coming down the nerves and contracting the muscles. And so when you move your hand, you've got all this much, much, much more complicated explanation. But I think it's the same kind of explanation. It's mechanism. And this brings us to the idea in philosophy. Philosophers talk about P zombies, philosophical zombies. And a philosophical zombie is someone who does, who acts just like a normal human being, but inside the light isn't on. It's like inside they're like the mousetrap. It's all mechanism. And there's no real mind there. This also gets into the philosophical problem of other minds. How do you know that other people have minds? And there's a philosophical position called Salafism, which says, I'm the only person that exists, and I'm kind of like dreaming this whole world. And so, um, kind of like the, in the movie The Matrix. So the idea is that if we didn't have consciousness ourselves, we probably wouldn't imagine it exists. Or we would know that if you uh, hurt another human being, they're going to act in a certain way. Uh, but we know that if my computer's on and I pull the power and plug it back in, that's going to act in a certain way. It's going to boot up. But we would not attribute an inner experience if we didn't have it ourselves. And that inner experience is what I consider consciousness. And so when the person drove to work, maybe their higher mental faculties weren't fully engaged. Their memory was kind of still half asleep, etc., etc. But I would say that they were conscious. And this mechanism distinction seems to me very fundamental. The idea that a lot of, well, let's take the case where um, they can stimulate the brain with electrodes, maybe doing a, a brain operation or on animals or something. And it's known if you stimulate this area, the subject will feel pain. If you, sub- if you stimulate this other area, the subject will feel pleasure. Another area will maybe stimulate memories of childhood. And that is fine. But some people take that to mean that consciousness and the brain are the same thing. But in my view, that's just mechanism. It's just, well, if I touch this, 
cheese hard enough the mount the trap shuts and if i uh, stimulate this part of the brain through very 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 complicated processes much more complicated than a mouse trap something happens but it still doesn't get into consciousness is why does it feel in other words uh, i read once that uh, pain seems to correlate with a certain kind of brain cell. It might have been C cells, let's say it was. And the idea is, okay, pain correlates with C cells, but why does the firing of those cells cause us the sensation of pain? If it's just a bunch of um, biological matter going through some electrical uh, states, why would that cause pain or pleasure or whatever? So I think that to me, that's the hard problem of consciousness is you can go through mechanism. But what you're doing is you're explaining a more complicated mousetrap. But if you say that the, let's say, if, if we were to decide that the mousetrap had consciousness, that it had desires, that it just didn't like that second mouse, then nothing in the mechanism of the mousetrap would explain where that consciousness comes from. And my understanding is that it, that's the exact same situation with us. But some people, because they can describe mechanism well, seem to think that that's all there is to consciousness. And maybe that is all there is. I don't know. But I think this mechanism distinction for me is uh, fundamental. So let's do a thought experiment. Let's imagine we knew with absolute certainty the mouse trap was conscious. And moreover, let's suppose we knew that when the spring was in tension, when the trap was set, the mouse trap experienced anticipation and excitement. And when the spring was not set, the mouse trap experienced peace and relaxation. Now we would have a physical correlate. When the potential energy of the spring is higher because the trap is set, that correlates with anticipation and excitement. But the potential energy of the spring would in no way explain how the consciousness of anticipation and excitement could arise in a mousetrap. And I think the situation is similar for us. We can find all sorts of physical correlates for our mental states. But how those mental states arise, I think, remains a mystery. The standard model of physics, throw in relativity, throw in whatever scientific theory you wish, as far as I know, do not explain how consciousness can arise do not explain the foundations of consciousness. So, is consciousness something that exists above and beyond the physical universe? Is it something that exists in some sense independent of physical reality? Very interesting question. Thanks for listening.